Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. So in this year's video, <laughs> So apologies about not putting a video out for a while. We have been very busy. We've had a lot going on uh, with our new website being built and potentially moving into a new premises. So we've had loads going on, so we haven't had time to film. So apologies for that, but hopefully this will make up for it because it's pretty long, but it's quite detailed. So in this week, we're gonna show you how to reupholster a high back studded armchair. So as you can see, very high back, arms, seat. This is very different to what we've done before. This is gonna be a slightly different way of doing things because we've got, we've got to strip all the fabric off. Then we've got to take the seat out to to be able to upholster the back so we need to upholster the inside back then we put the seat in upholster the seat then we do the outside back then we've got to do borders up the sides with studs with gaps in them so we'll show you how we do that so if you like upholstery tips and tricks please don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each time we upload a new video apologies if we haven't got back to you yet we've got quite a long list of comments that are coming in that we haven't been able to respond to so we'll get back to you as soon as we can so without further ado this is how to reupholster our high back studded armchair Action! So, um, this is a chair. Uh, we're going to reupholster this. Yeah, I'm going to show you how I go about this, or how I, yeah, how I'd go about it. So I'm going to strip it down, see if there's any corners being cut anywhere. I would say there probably is, but it is a nice chair. And everyone that's seen it, it's like, oh, that's beautiful. But this is uh, before fabric. So what we do is we'll strip it out, check the seat, check all the padding. On first inspections, as you can see here, this seam is here. This one is here. This is very, very bad. So you want these to join up, these seams. So what I'll do is I will take this panel off and I will adjust it so there's a seam here. And I'll also mark down here. So I'll do a, a joint from there to there. Let's check the other side as well. Now the other side's a bit better. It's still not great. So join there, join there. And then I know that them seams will line up. Even though there's a fair size gap for me it's still quite important that the seams line up what i might also do is here so what you'll notice here is they haven't collared around here which is pretty important we normally do that we put a collar around corners like this you put a bit of fabric you sew a bit of fabric on because because otherwise this happens exactly what's happened here there's no collar so the fabric's just sort of pushed in and it's all baggy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark for a collar i'll do that on both sides just to get you around here essentially Hopefully you can see what I've done there. So I've marked, see with that pen? So I've marked around there and then I'm gonna fill where the frame is and then I'm gonna run that collar around and then back under. So what I'll do is I'll strip this down. I'll obviously reuse that inside back. The seams sort of line up in the same place. So we'll, we'll copy that. The seat I will check because I don't feel like the seat fits very well. But there's too much fabric here side to side so i'll check that and i'll show you how i check that um so i'm going to strip all this down now and then we'll go from there as you can see i took a web out without the camera on very bad very very naughty obviously these are quite soft so we're going to run some new webs in we're going to put new webs on and then we're going to put hess in on top then we're going to look at the back because i think the back is okay really but the webs are soft we'll tighten the webs on the back put hess in on the back as well Now we're putting on our protective layer of hessian. See, I've turned that under already. Sometimes I staple it, then fold it back and staple it again. I'm just gonna pull nice and tight that way. Pull nice and tight this way. Put it nice and tight. So, see how good that is now, nice and protected. So now we're gonna do the same with the back, protect it with hessian, tighten the webbings. Right, so we've got our old fabric and we got our new fabric. So first one, I'm gonna take these flies off the bottom. I will be putting these back on, but obviously not these ones. So I'm just gonna mark top, inside back and then top Inside arm. So just nipping middle and the middle. 
So now I know where my center is. So this is my outside back, and you can see here, these are my marks for my join. See, they're slightly different because they don't line up. What I do is I cut on the line. Then when I'm cutting on the fabric, I add half an inch onto each side, half an inch onto both panels. So it finishes exactly where I want it to. Top, outside arm, top, outside arm. So now we're cutting our little outside arms, inside arms, sorry, inside arms. And we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Right, so let's copy that over on the other side. Right, so here we have our original seat. As you might remember, we had to, um, we said we was going to cut this bit off here. So we made that mark and it's a little bit too wide on the sides. So let's even it up so it's exactly the same. So again, nip in the middle, nip in the back of the middle. Then we have a look at what side is probably the best side. So I'd probably say this side. So I'm just going to take about a quarter of an inch off this side. And then I'm going to cut that about half an inch away from the mark. And that is where my collar is going to sit. So my collar is going to sew around here. So I'll get a nice finish. Now what we want to do is lay that on so it lines up with the inside back, with the pattern. I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, but there is like a crocodile skin effect running down this fabric. So I'm going to copy this side only because, you know, I folded it in half. So I know I've got a perfect template. So nip at the back. And around the collar. And nice rounded front along the front and then nip into the middle and then we can fold it in half. Laying that nice and flat. And then we're gonna cut around that. So here we've got this, um, this is the panel that runs down the arm. Once you've put the inside back and the outside back on, this bit runs down, it sort of folds under itself. So I'm just gonna flatten this out with the iron and I'm gonna cut around that. Now, I'm gonna stitch my inside back, which is here, to my inside arms. Because I've got to go this way, so the arm goes down first and then the back goes on top. I'm gonna to line it up at the bottom, like so. Under the foot. Right, that's all then. I'm gonna sew my other inside arm on, leveling it up at the bottom. Right now, so now we're all sewn together, I'm going to sew a fly across the bottom. So I'm going to start from this side. I'm just sewing a fly across, give it something extra to pull on. Right, so that's the inside back all ready to go. It's going to run up a length of piping as well for the seat. Right, so now we've got the front of our seat. Let's go up a nip. Put a nip in the middle of that piping so I know I can put that there. Right, so now we're coming to a corner around here. I'm just going to put a few nips in the piping cord.
So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up the pattern. So now I'm laying my border on top of the piping, running this border on, making sure the pattern follows all the way down. So now I'm putting another fly around the bottom, or around the back, shall we say. Right, so we've got our seat ready. So obviously you've got to get the back on first before you put the foam for the seat on. It's all sewn up, we've got a fly on the bottom, our two collars on the side. So what I'm gonna do is, just gonna staple them in the same position. So I'm just gonna temp these down. One there, and then one over this side. I'm gonna staple off the bottom, and I'm probably gonna start working the arms around, then I'm gonna go up with the inside of the top. Right, so we need to make two cuts. So there's, there's a rail here and there's a rail over here. So if I lift this fabric up, and lift that foam there, you can see that rail. So we want to cut up to that rail, and then when you get to here, you want to go that way and then that way. So you're, you're cutting a V, not a V, a Y. So you're going straight and then that way and then that way. So I'll show you. So you go straight up, and you need to feel where it is. And it's there, so you want to go that way, and then you feel, feel with your fingers where it is again. that way. So see there, now we've cut around the rail, the fabric will move around the rail. I'm just gonna snip that off, we don't need all that. So that's that one, and we're gonna do this side. So that is what the cut will look like. You can snip some of that away because you're not gonna need all of that. And then tuck all your fabric through. You can see our, our pattern there down the middle, so we wanna get that fixed on and start working our way around. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tack off it's back here, so I'm pulling that in. So now what we want to do is start working around. So now I can pull that, staple that off back here. So now we've stapled off here, we're going to work our way around. So you'll see all this bagginess here. That will come out when we pull this way like so. So what I will do is I will put a temporary in here. So I've pulled all that forward here. I'm going to just put a temporary in here at the front just to hold it in place while we work all this out. So now we're gonna pull that in there. So we've got another rail here, it's about two inches wide. So we wanna cut again, so you can feel it with your finger and you wanna cut up to that. So you can tuck that around like so and then you see when I'm pulling that, fabric's sitting much nicer. So I'm just gonna, first of all I'm gonna start pulling up this way. So let's tack this off a little bit. The fabric's only coming to here and we're gonna tack the outside onto here as well. Then there's a separate border that runs down with studs on it. So we don't need to go all the way over. So now we're gonna pull the fabric around from here, hold it there. Nice and smooth, make sure there's no bumps. Robert's your father's brother. You can get rid of most of this, you're not going to see any of that. Once the seat's on, so we're going to do the same now on the other side, and then we'll start working up and over. So now we've got a bottom on, going to work our way up. And this is just the way I do it, you don't have to do it this way. So I've obviously nipped the centre here, and I know that my centre is there on the frame. Actually, we can double check that. So halfway is there. So that is exactly halfway. So I know that I want that join. Well, that's that nip there. I'm just going to temporary this on at the top because as we start working our way up, this bit's going to be a lot tighter. So what we've done there is we've just got our center on. I might put one either side of it just to sort of hold it in place. Okay, so now we're going to start working our way up this way. So from the middle, we don't want to pull all of that over here because Half of it's for over there. So from the center, working your way over. So I'm not putting temporaries in here. I know that that's gonna be fine. So now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So up here, once we get to this point, what I wanna do is pull this round. 
really nice and tight because up here we've got to do pleats not like you're going to see them it's going to be black but we're going to do them so i'm going to pull this round because i don't want any extra fabric i want it nice and tight so i'm working that fabric round and we're just gonna so now i've got all this here but i know that's as tight as it can be so now i'm going to start putting pleats in so you'll see one there On there and you'll see you'll just make a nice even you're barely gonna see these but so I'll just cut away a load of that fabric see here how this is gonna finish we've got our last pleat to come here like so and that Is the inside back on this side finished so now we're going to do the same on the other side so now we've done our ends we're just going to work the rest of our inside back all the way down to the end you want to make sure this is nice and smooth there's no lumpiness and bumpiness Now I'm going to glue the old seat back down. So this square in the middle is for a dome. So it's not dead flat, so it gives you a nice dome to the middle. As these chairs are quite new, I don't need to replace it. Sometimes you can add a bit more on, but this one's perfectly fine. Um, you could even go with another layer of half inch over the top. So now I'm just going to glue this down. So now you want to line this up with the front. Nice and level. What I'm going to do now is stick a half inch strip around the front here. Before it was a, a much thinner strip, I just think half inch strip is going to look much better. So I'm putting some nice thick 9 ounce Dacron on here to give it a bit of a bit more of a nice domed cushioned finish careful not to spray your fabric i'm always constantly bloody doing so when you cut your dacron especially for it's for a seat or an inside back always cut extra tuck it under and it just tightens the gap between the rail and the seat or the back and it gives you a nice you know nice clean finish so i'm going to do the same here here you're going to have too much so what i do is i pinch and cut about half inch away then you can glue that together so now we're going to fix our seat on what we'll do is fold it back so we can see our selvage which we might make a few cuts in here because at the moment it just feels tight it feels like it's going to sit up so a few around there and a few this side you can see how it's sitting now that that fabric is quite tight so a couple of little nips in there will help it release the tension and help it sit down better. That's how we want our selvage to sit, like that. We don't want it under there, like that. We want it down, like that. That's how you get a nice quality finished look. So now I'm gonna start rolling my borders down. Right, so here, I don't know if you guys remember earlier, so we've put a collar around here. Before they didn't do that and it was all, all the fabric was lumpy and bumpy around here, around this curve. So we've now put a collar on it, which means we've sewn a bit of fabric around. So, so what I need to do is see where that collar is here. At the moment, that is too far away. So I want to pull nice and tight. So the collar is right up by the rail, nice and tight there. We know there that our collar's in the right place. Now we're going to do the same over here. So you can see there, look at how far that collar is away from where it needs to be. So we're going to pull that nice and tight this way. So now I'm just making sure that my lines are perfectly straight, that my piping stays nice and tight and straight. So I'm just putting a few temporaries in. I'm just going to put one in there. Now we can start working this seat on. So I'm going to do the front first. You can see here it comes out of line. So the best thing to do is get yourself lined up and, and just pull your fabric down, looking down the line, making sure it stays nice and straight. So when it comes to doing these, going around legs and you can't staple off, you need to pull the fabric nice and tight 
because you're tucking it under. If you, if you tuck it under loose, there's a good chance it'll unfold. So a good way to do this, I'm just gonna pull it around nice and tight here and just put a temporary round this side. So I'm just gonna put a temporary in there. So now I know that's really nice and tight. I go really tight here, up to the top of the leg. And I do the same on the other side. So now we take this temporary out of the other side. Now we cut some of this away. So don't need all of that. And we tuck that. Let's tuck that under like so and then you pull tight back round to here and then you can staple that off under there now you know that is not coming out so now we're just going to finish the back of our seat we've got a fly that goes all around this we need to cut again into them two wooden rails i'm just feeling where they are with my fingers so i'm just going to cut cut into an, at an angle down there goes through that goes through that way that goes through that way now here we have a collar that goes round here so that is far too much fabric to tuck down so I'm just gonna cut I'm gonna cut even tighter here to be fair so now all that now that all goes down there so as you can see our fabric collar gives us a nice finish around there so it doesn't all pucker up like it did on the original so now I'm just pulling the fabric out pulling that all through so with a dining chair like this now everything's through all the flies have pulled through so now you can just as you start pulling it around you can sort of see where you need to pull and where you need to loosen off making sure it's nice and even so i'm just going to start stapling off at the back right so now we're around the side so what i've done here is I haven't done my hair but it's all good what i've done is i have made sure that my seams line up so what i've done is i've put a staple in here i've made sure that that seam lines up with the, this seam and i've done the same on this side my seams are exactly where i want them to be and i've also put a few temporaries up here so now what i'm going to do is now i know that's exactly where i want it to be i'm going to run a chalk line there a little mark there and a little mark there so i know i need to line those up so now i can take that off so hopefully guys you can see my chalk line down here I'm just going to cut half an inch away from that. So I know that's all I need to allow at the top. So that's my half an inch allowance. And then there's that line there. Well, that doesn't look like the centre, but that's where it's marked on the back. Right, so now we can start stapling on. When you've got a curve back like this, a pull nice and tight. You definitely need to pull. Let it die. Nice and tight. So now we're using our back tack strip, pushing up, right up. When you're stapling this, you want to staple close to the top as you can to stop it from folding down on itself. Right, so let's now pull that down and check. There's one sticking out there. You are the very sneaky, huh? There we go, pop him out. Get out of here. So now we're going to put a lining fabric on here, Dacron, then we can start putting our outside back on. So now we're going to put our Dacron on, guys. We always staple up the top as well. So just, start, just so it doesn't turn on itself. So here we go. Now we're ready. So I'm just gonna pull down nice and tight into the middle. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. One here. We've done a center staple and we've done one here and one here. That to make sure that the seams drop exactly next to the legs like we wanted them to. So now we can start working this outside back on, making sure that our, our seams line up for a start. So I'm gonna get one in there. Uh, one around this side, so it lines up. Right, so now we're gonna start working our fabric round. So basically each side that I do, I'll copy on the other side. 
Right, so now the top is all on. Now we can start working around this bottom section here. This outside arm has to come around here, then I want a nice straight fold down here. So I'm just gonna cut away some of this excess. So that's gonna go under there. And that's gonna pull it up and staple it up. I'm just gonna run you through what we're doing here. So we're putting this side border on. So what I've done is I just put a staple up here to hold the top in place. Now I'm just literally, as I work my way down, feeling where the wood is and just folding it under, getting a nice staple as we run down. What I'm doing is just folding under, pulling quite tight. So I'm trying to make a gap, but I mean, we can take these out. When we do the studs, we can take these out. So it doesn't really matter where the staples are. This is where people's hands are gonna go. We're gonna put a little bit of padding underneath just to make it less bumpy. So what I'm gonna do is just run. I'm just gonna run this fabric down. So now I'm just gonna take a little bit of quarter inch foam. Now what I'm doing is I'm running this foam down the staple line. So now we're gonna chop this off. I'm just gonna put a couple of staples in that corner where I think it's gonna roll over. So I'm just gonna cut away some of this excess fabric. Guys, so as you can see here, I've put two studs in exactly the same place right on the corner of this arm. So now I'm gonna work my way back and up, making about two inches in between each stud. I like to use my long nose pliers and then I can sort of hold. So we're doing it right on the edge of the border, like so. We're just gonna start working our way up the arm 